Hello and welcome to our next video lesson on Carnot maps. And in this lesson, we're actually going to dig into some of the real mechanics of how a Carnot map works by taking a look at their most simplest form, uh, which is a two-variable Carnot map. So let's get into it. So the first thing I want to do is talk about the sort of shape of a Carnot map. And a Carnot map is just a box. And all we want to do is take this box and cut it in half and cut it in half again to create a grid. Now, inside that grid, we'll assign a binary value. Remember, these are two variable Carnot maps, so these will have two bit numbers. We'll go 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1. One. Right. Now remember from our preliminary concepts discussion, we talked about the concept of a great code and adjacency and how it applies to um, the uniting theorem. So if we do our numbers 0, 1, 2, 3, just like we had here, and we have 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. Remember the code requires us to shuffle it up. So that means we're going to have 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, and 1, 0. Right, and there we see the adjacency relationships between each of these terms. And so if we come over here and look at our K-map structure, we have adjacency between each of these different uh, cells, right? So the 0, 0 is adjacent to the 0, 1 cell. Not only is it sort of adjacent by gray code standards, it's also physically adjacent. This is kind of why the K-map is pretty useful is because we can visually see the adjacency instead of having to look at the numbers to see if there's adjacency, right? So we have adjacency between the 0 and 1 and the 1, 0 and 1, 1 and the 0, 0 and 1, 0. We have adjacency between these vertical and horizontally connected terms, but there's no adjacency diagonally, right? So the 0, 0 is not adjacent to the 1, 1 and the 1, 0 is not adjacent to the 0, 1. All right, so that's what we're going to be looking for. We're going to be looking for these adjacency relationships between these vertically connected cells. So the next thing we can do is sort of notice how this applies to our variables, right? So if we look at, well, let's look at this column here, and we say that that's the left-hand side is our A, and the right-hand side is our B, and we notice that this first vertical column or, yeah, the first vertical column here has zeros in the B position. So up here we might write that that's the B not column. And this right hand column has ones in the B position. So we call that our B column. Same deal about the horizontal rows. We have zeros in the A row. So we're going to call that the A not row. And we have ones in the second row here. So we'll call that our A row. So that's our basic structure for a K-map. Now I like to modify that just a little bit um, so it's a little bit easier to read. So let's take a look at what that looks like. So what we're going to do is this. We're going to draw the box again. We'll cut it in half horizontally like we did before, but now I'm going to leave sort of a stem hanging out on the end there. Cut it in half vertically and again kind of leave a stem hanging out on the top there. And then I'm also create a little, what I call a label stem that sort of sticks out of the corner here. And then what I'm gonna say is I'm gonna type or write F for the function that we're trying to solve, A down here and B up here. And then I'll go again and label this the A not row, the A row, the B not row, or excuse me, column, and the B column. And then I'll go ahead and label each of these cells, but to keep it simpler, we'll just use the base 10 representation, 0, 1, 2, and 3. You know what, I'm gonna go ahead and save that so I can copy and paste it and I'll have to keep drawing that in our subsequent examples. Control C, all right, cool. So now let's go ahead and do an example. Let's take a look at something like this. F is a function of A and B and is equal to we use our generalized minterm expansion. Sum of minterms, let's do zero and one. So the way we apply this to a K-map 
is we take the cells that are numbered in here, 0 and 1, and we just drop 1s in that cell. So before we do this, before we solve it with the k-map, let's go ahead and solve it with the Boolean algebra. So we know that this sum of min terms is equal to a0 and b, or a0, excuse me, a0 and b0, or a0 and b. And we know that we can use the uniting theorem and combine them using b to get a result that is equal to a0. So that's the answer we'll be looking for on the k-map. So in the k-map, we're basically going to do the same thing. We're just going to so we go ahead and try to combine some of these terms into groups. Now, there are two rules about combining these groups. The first rule is that the groups have to be rectangular, right? So we can't split the corners of anything. There has to be adjacency. It has to be horizontally or vertically connected. They have to be rectangular or square. The second thing is that they have to be groups that are powers of two. So a group of one is okay, a group of two is okay, a group of four is okay, but not a group of three. Right, and in the two-variable map, that would sort of break the rectangular rule anyway. So we see that we have at zero and one, they're adjacent to each other, so we can connect them by just drawing a little box around them. Now, when we draw our box, what we do is we look and see where does the box fit in this case, it fits neatly inside the A0 row, but we see that it splits the B0 and B, right? So you look for wherever the box fits neatly inside one of the groups. It could be one of the columns or one of the rows, or maybe multiple columns and rows. But you look and see where it fits, and all the variables for which it fits, those are the terms that it simplifies to. So this function of... A and B simplifies to, fits neatly inside A0, so it's just equal to A0. And that really is all there is to k-maps. So let's just go ahead and look at some more complex examples. So let's do this. Let's take a look at a little bit of a bigger function. Let's go F is a function of A and B and is equal to the sum of midterms 0 two, and three. Let's do the Boolean algebra first, just to say we did. Zero is A0 and B0, or two is A and B0, or three is A and B. Now, we know we can combine them using uniting theorem by looking at, let's look at the A0 here. Ooh, it's a brighter color, the A0. That's going to get us B0. We could also combine the second and third terms um, under the Bs, and that's going to get us just A. So we should get an answer that is A or B0. So one thing to remember, notice that we use the uniting theorem on the second term twice. We're going to see that reflected in the k-map. So let's go and draw the map. Oh, and I copied it. So I don't need to draw it again. I can just do this. Paste it. Stick it where we want. Awesome. Cool. So now we go and we look at the midterms, 0, 2, and 3. So we'll draw 1 and the 0. A one in the two, and a one in the three. And then we'll go to combining them. So let's go and set up our solution. F is a function of A and B, and is equal to, first, um, let's go ahead and grab this row here. So two and three, we can group them, all right? And we see that this row fit, or excuse me, this box fits neatly inside the A row, but it sort of splits the difference between the B. And that means that this function simplifies to just A, or that term simplifies to just A. But we've got room for another term, right? We keep going until we've combined all of the ones into boxes of some form or another. So we go ahead and look at these guys. 
we can combine the zero and the two. And just like before, we see that it fits neatly inside of the B column, but splits the difference between the A's. So this term simplifies to just B naught. And once we've sort of covered all of the ones, we know that we're done. And sure enough, we got the solution that we expected to get via the Boolean algebra. So let's take a look at one more example. Actually, let's look at two more examples of some kind of extreme cases that can happen. They'll illustrate some fun things about our k-maps. So what if we had a function that just consisted of a single term? Let's say we had f is a function of a and b and is equal to the sum of midterms just one. And that's our only term. So we go to group them following the same thing as before, right? A group of one is a power of two, so it's a valid selection. And we see that it fits neatly inside the A row and inside the B column. So that our solution here is f is a function of A and B and is equal to A naught and B. So we can see how those min terms sort of exist inside the K map, even if they're just sitting by themselves. So that's the example if we have only one cell. What if we had all of them filled? What if we had f is a function of a and b and is equal to the sum of min terms 0, 1, 2, 3. Um, and we know our Boolean algebra that's a naught and b naught, or a naught and b, or a and b naught, or a and b. So if we combine stuff again using the uniting theorem, we will see that we get, let's see here. Let's do the B's here to get A naught. There's a couple different ways we could have solved this one. And then we'll do well, the B's again to get A. So this whole expression simplifies to A or, or excuse me, A naught or A, which we know is complementarity, which means it's equal to one. So when all of the min terms exist, So we've got our map, and we drop in all of the terms. And let's see, so now we go to combine our terms. So like we saw before, we can combine this row, and that's going to get us a, oop, a naught. And we can combine the bottom. That'll get us just A. Now, but we see that we can create a larger group, right? So from these groups of two, we could create one square group of four. So let's do that. So we draw a box around all of these fellows. And we see that this term splits the difference between the A and the A naught. It also splits the difference between the B and B naught. And when you have a function, or excuse me, have a term that does not fit neatly inside of any of the variables, well, then that means you're equal to one. Another easy way to look at it is if the map is completely full of ones, then the whole thing is equal to one. So we could have just looked at this at a glance now, ah, all the cells are full. This means it must be equal to one. So, and that's really all there is for Carnot maps, especially for two variables. We've kind of exhausted all of even the possible input combinations. Um, but just to recap our two sort of fundamental rules of K maps, the first rule is groups must be rectangular. No elbows, no weird shapes. And 
two groups must be a power of two. In size, so that means that it can be a group of one, like we had here, a group of two, a group of four, a group of eight, a group of sixteen, etc. But not a group of three or five or seven. Right? You can't have that. So that's all there is for two variable. Uh, K-maps. In the next video, we'll take a look at three variables. We'll see that the structures are here, the concepts and processes are exactly the same. Um, it's just a little bit more complex and sophisticated. The setup's also a little bit weirder too, but we'll take a look at it in the next video. So thank you so much, and I'll see you guys in the next one.